uh, offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith he obtained witness that he was righteous, testifying of his gifts, and, and, by, and, and by it being dead, yet speaking. All right. It was by faith that Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. God said that he was pleased with the gifts of Abel uh, that Abel offered and called Abel a good man because of his faith. Okay, so if y'all come every Sunday morning, pay your tithes, and just putting your tithes in there saying that, uh, well, I, I don't know if I want to say that, but if you don't have faith, uh, don't put your money in there if you don't believe that God is, can multiply whatever your needs are. You can't have no doubt in your heart about that. Here at El Belta, we believe and we know that it's by faith that the doors of this church have remained open, not just through COVID, <laughs> but all the time. It's God who provides for us. And it's the few of us who know and trust and tie believing that God even even myself when I I promise you I put I pay my tithes when I don't have nothing else and I can testify I don't care where it come from but the Lord has always made a way first things are first first things are first you know some of us are good about paying tithes because we have it but it's when you don't have it Is when you don't have it, and you know that God is going to make a way out of no way. Most of us have, uh, most of us are religious, but we're not righteous. I I, most of us relig are religious. We, we can do, we, even preachers, we know how to preach, we know how to sing, we know how to shout, we know how to, we, the musicians know how to play. We, everybody know how to do everything, but that doesn't mean that they're righteous. We see it all the time, you know, but, but that's who we like the best, the unrighteous people. Because the unrighteous people use us in so many different ways. All right, I'm going to leave y'all alone. Let's come on. It is, <laughs> it is by faith that Abel offered God a better sacrifice. Then Cain did. God said that he was pleased with the gifts that Abel offered and called Abel the good man because of his faith. Abel died through his faith. He is still speaking. That's what the Bible says. Let's move to verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because he had translated him. For before his translation... He had this testimony that he pleased God. Yep, now, yep, yep, yep. now, we may not be translated or we could be translated, but when you die, what would be your testimony? <laughs> do, do you know what your testimony will be? And, and, and this is not finding somewhere to have your funeral. The, and I'm not, I'm not being ugly, but faith requires some action. And action will show how much faith you have. Okay. It was by faith that Enoch was taken to heaven so that he would not die. He could not be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken, the Bible says that he was truly, he truly pleased God. Okay, verse 6 says, um, But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must first believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That means without faith no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must first believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. So if you come to church and you, church and you don't want to know who Jesus is, and you just want to feel good about something. You should want to feel good about God. Because he is sweet. I know. I know. 
Come on, y'all, y'all got it. If y'all paid attention, y'all should have finished it. He's sweet, you know. And if he's sweet, you know, you ought to be able to tell the world that I found the Savior. <laughs> and he's sweet, I know. <laughs> okay. Faith in God is to be demonstrated, not defined. God is like the wind. We can't see him, but if we look around, we can always see what God is doing. If you just look over at your neighbor, you can testify that God has been good to him. They're breathing, <laughs> walking and talking. And some of y'all saying, yeah, amen, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? <laughs> Our faith in God grows as we fellowship with God. We must have, uh, both have a desire to please him and to diligently seek him. Prayer. Meditation on God's word and worship and all those things help us in our walk with God. Prayer, meditation on the word of God and worship. Worship. All these help us in our walk with God. Enoch walked with God in, his, in this wicked world. Uh, before he, before the flood came, he was able to keep his life pure. Enoch was taken to heaven one day and, and seen no more. Abel died a violent life, but Abel never died. Enoch never died. Let's do this again. Enoch was taken to heaven one day and seen no more. Abel died a violent life. But Enoch never died. God has a different plan for each and every one of us. God has a plan for each and every one of us. How we, how we came into the world and how we will leave the world. How we came into the world and how we will leave the world. God already has it in he already know. He don't have to have it written down. He got a big brain. He, he, can, he knows everything. He's omniscient. He knows all things. Verse 7. Y'all, I'm, I'm trying to speed up just a little bit. But slowing down helps me. It is by faith that Noah heard God's warning about the things that uh, he could not yet see. He obeyed God and, and built a large boat. Or, or art to save his family. By faith, uh, Noah showed that, the, showed that the world was wrong, and he became one of those who made right with God through faith. Okay, Noah's faith involved uh, his whole person. Okay. Noah's faith involved his whole person. And I mean his whole body, mind, body, and soul. His mind was warned of God. His heart was moved with fear. And his will acted on what God had told him. So in order, of us, in order of us, for us to have faith, we got to involve our whole body, mind, and soul. What our heart feels should be the, on the same page as what our mind says. And if our heart and our mind is on the same page, our action should follow. Right? <laughs> Since nobody had seen the flood, they all, or no rainstorms, they all thought Noah was just a crazy man. But he believed what God had said, you know, and so... A lot of times, we, we, God tells us something, we can't see just why he's telling us to do it. And, and, and because we are so smart and have all the intelligence that we think we should have, we just do things that the way we want to do them. And they end up causing us more trouble than it's really worth. 
you know, what sometimes God will tell us to, um, Pastor Marlon would say, stop and help people along the way. Uh, you see some panhandlers out on the streets, some. We know that they are <clears throat> just trying to use us, and, and, and a lot of them are able bodies, and they, and they just refuse to go do something for real for themselves. But it's not always up to us to, to the decide to do, determine what their issues are or if we should or should not help them. God is pleased when we help them. And I'm not telling y'all to give them everything you have. And, you know, you can look at some people and know, oh, no, I just told y'all don't do that. So don't do that. I'm sorry. Don't do that. But you can see when people are trying to use people and not do for themselves. They deceive. They have a deception on them. All right, y'all. We, we moving on. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I got it. I'm, I was looking at something else. Noah's faith influenced his whole family. That's what I was trying to get to. His, his faith influenced those around him. Your faith should be that strong to those around you should want to, if they don't believe, they should want to figure out what it is that you got or, or what it is that's making you feel so good right now <laughs> on the inside. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little slow. I'm a little slow. It is also, it also condemned the world uh, when, when uh, showed that the world was just had no faith in God. For his faith, this we're still talking about Noah. His faith revealed the world's unbelief. Events proved that Noah was right and that he heard the voice of God. Jesus used this experience to warn the people uh, to be ready when he returns. We, we have a lot of warnings now. Even today, we have a lot of warnings. And, and most of us are... Uh, a given God's warning a blind's eye. We still want to do what we want to do, how we want to do it. And, and, we don't, and showing that we have no faith in what God says. You know, most of us are, you know, and we have the right to, 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 to feel of, a little afraid about COVID, but we still believe that God is going to make a way. Whatever the situation is, God is going to make a way. If he's going to heal your body. Remember I said he know how you came into the world and how you was going to live and leave. But that doesn't mean put yourself in harm's way. What I'm saying is we got a, a duty, and we owe God praise. We got to demonstrate our faith no matter what the world says. Because just like Noah built an ark, and those around him didn't believe, but they, they were laughing at him. But he saved Noah and his family. So that's, I'm telling y'all to tell y'all family members and your friends that God still saves if you put your trust in him. You know, we already know that God is good. He's always making a way. But look at me. You can tell them, look at me. I'm a testimony. There are those in here who are really testimonies. And they can testify that it wasn't by their own will that God, but God brought them through. Amen. In Noah's day, the people were involved in, the, uh, involved in uh, innocent everyday activities and, and completely ignored Noah's witness. That's how the world doing us. They're ignoring us. We, we, we've come to worship. we come to glorify the one who died for us, the one who made it possible for us to have the life that we have. Whether your life is, you feel like it's good or bad, God gave it to you. And if you weren't willing to learn to, to praise him a little bit more and give him homage a little bit more, God will probably bless you a little bit more. So our trials and tribulation can be because of some of the stuff that we do or don't do. You know, if we learn to praise God and, and put our faith in him just that much more, I think God will deliver us or, or show us his deliverance and show those around us that he's able to deliver. Oh, Lord. 
Verse 8. Hold on, let's go back. Hold on. Verse 7, it's still talking about Noah. Um, <laughs> Noah's faith revealed the world's unbelief. Uh, and, you know, we look at Hebrews 39. It goes back just a little bit. It says, the just live by faith. We should, the just, if you're just, you should live by faith. How, how many of us are living by faith? You don't have to raise your hand like Pastor Martin. You don't have to raise your hand. You got, but you got to learn to live by faith. And not by sight, because sight will confuse you and have you doing some of the stuff you ain't supposed to do. But if you put your faith and trust in God, he will see us through. Verse 9, it was by faith that he, uh, that, I know, let's go back to verse 8, I'm sorry. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed God's call to go to another place. Uh, God promised to give him. He left his own country, not knowing where he was going. Right. It is by faith that he lived in a foreign, foreign, and, and foreign country. God promised to give him. He lived in tents and, with Isaac and Jacob, and he received the same promise. They received the same promise from God. The nation began with the call of Abraham. God promised Abraham and Sarah but, uh, a son, but they had to wait 25 long years for the fulfillment of his promise. Okay, so most of us have faith, and we, we know we have faith, and we've been asking and waiting for God to do, do something for us, whether it be deliverance or, 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 or giving us something or supplying a certain need or healing a certain part of our body of sickness or illness. But these people believed and they waited. You know, as a matter of fact, I believe they tried to fix it for themselves. And that, yes, they, they tried to fix it for themselves. And that's where we go wrong. If we put our trust in God, you have to do what God says do. You can't try to fix it yourself. You have to give it over to Jesus and let him work it out. Their son Isaac became the father of Jacob and, and Esau. And it, it was Jacob who really built the nation through the birth of his 12 sons. Joseph saved the nation in the land of Egypt. And Moses, who later, later delivered them from Egypt. Waiting is hard, a hard thing to do. Yet, true faith is able to wait for the fulfillment of God's promise. In God's time. But while we are waiting, we must also obey. By faith, Abraham obeyed. He obeyed when he didn't know where he was going. He lived in tents. He was a stranger and a pilgrim through this land. And, and he had to be ready to move whenever God spoke to him. So, we, a lot of us get comfortable in doing what we do for ourselves. But sometimes God is telling us to, I, I'm not talking about change churches or nothing. That's not what I'm saying. Don't get that confused. <laughs> we get, we're in our comfort zone, even when we come to church, and we want to just sit and watch everybody else do something. But God ought to touch your heart to move and do something to, in order to help others to see what worship really is. It's too many of us in here being in church all of our lives and don't know how to worship God. We don't know how to worship God. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We ought to be making a joyful noise. <laughs> it might be too cold in here, but it, we ought to be making a joyful noise. We as Christians today are stranger, strangers and pilgrims through this land. Abraham, Abraham had eyes on that heavenly city. And that's what we should have. We should have our eyes on heaven. On heaven. I, I think Uncle Clarence is saying, he, I got heaven on my mind. <laughs> I got heaven on my mind. And that's what we all should have heaven on our mind. It, it keep me sitting. <laughs> there you go. Help me with the words. It kept me, keep me singing all the time. As I walk this narrow way, it, I, you can always hear me say that I have heaven on my mind. I, that's, 
And then you ought to be able to say, I'm glad that I got Jesus. <laughs> I'm glad that I got Jesus in my heart. I know who the one who died for me. <laughs> Abraham was waiting for the city. And Mark could sing a song that uh, when I make it to that city, everything's going to be all right. You know, we ought to be looking forward to the city, you know. And, and a part of looking towards the city and for the city is having faith in God. Knowing that whatever God has provided, we ought to give him praise for it. So, I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all have anything to thank God for, you ought to come to the house of worship. You, you, you don't have to do it at just at church, but when you get here, you ought to praise God just because of who he is. And what he has done for us. Don't let your faith expire. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. And then you got to remember to put, keep your hand in the master's hand. For when, when you feel lonely. And you don't know what to do. All you got to do is turn your eyes to heaven. And ask God to see you through. As a church we have come too far. And we're leaning on his left everlasting arm, trusting in God's holy word that he has never failed us yet. How many of y'all know that God haven't failed you yet? You ought to be excited this morning, believing and knowing that God is real and he's real in your heart. He's sweet, I know. Though strong storm clouds may rise and winds may blow, I'm not going to be afraid to tell the world that he's sweet, I know. I'm grateful this morning that God died. God sent his son to die for our sins. He, <laughs> he died on the old rugged cross. They put nails in his hands. And, and they put nails in his feet. They pierced him in his side. They put a crown of thrones on his head. And then he died. But the good news is that they placed him in a bar tomb. He stayed there all night Friday night, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. That's why we have faith. We have faith that God sent his son to die for our sins. God rose again with all power in his hand. God, he did it. He did it for you, he did it for you, and he did it for me. Thank God for Jesus. Oh, man. Thank God for Jesus. Because he's sweet, you know. You ought to tell the world that I know the Savior. And he's sweet, he's sweet, he's sweet. I know, amen. I got, you know what, I got faith. To know that everything is going to be all right. Oh, Lord. Y'all, we've had a rough year so far. But it's by faith that we know God is ahead of whatever the situation may become before us. But God is real. And I can feel him in my heart. I know he's real. They say, every time I turn around, he just keep on making a way every time i turn around he's bringing me through this and he's bringing me through that thank you jesus thank you jesus man god is real y'all god is real god is real God is real. He's sweet, I know. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They say give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 I know. He's sweet, I know. 
He's sweet, I know. Storms, cloud, I know they're going to continue to rise. But I'm not going to be afraid to tell the world that it's my faith. Or I'm going to show them that my faith helped me to understand that he's real and he's real in my heart. As the doors of the church are open. There might be someone in here who don't know who Jesus is and don't have faith and don't believe who and, and what that God what God can do. But that's why we gotta, us as Christians, have to show them the way. It's not up to one person to show everybody else the way. It's all of us, it's all of our duties to show the person that's sitting next to you who don't seem to know Jesus that God is real. And you have to put your faith in him. Amen. Eric, that sounds like your song. I am waiting on my baby. 
I will serve him for the rest of my life. I will serve him for the rest of my life. Serving the Lord. It's gonna pay hard. After a while. Testimony that God is my Savior, that Jesus died for my sins. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. All you have is right now is to turn your life over to Christ. Amen. Come on, Brother Cunningham. <laughs> this is our period for. I was supposed to say this first. It was, it's ours to extend, yours to accept or reject. It's our prayer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's time for our tithes and offering. <laughs> Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. We're going to read from the book of Malachi. <laughs> Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? 
and tithes and an offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all, be, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, here saith the Lord of hosts. 